Hey there, Postal here. So today we're going to be looking at the BVP-215-02 Tier 10 Multi-Role Plane. Uh, let's hop right into it. Alright, so what is this plane? The, the BVP-215 um, is the tier 10 on the, I mean, the FW line, technically. This line's pretty staggered, so you've got the Fakker Wolf 190s up to tier 7. Then you've got these BVPs, um, you know, the bat wings at tier 8, tier 9, and tier 10. The, I mean, the, everybody loves uh, the 210 and the 212, especially the 212 is an excellent plane. Um, in my opinion, it's the the you know, one of the best fighters in the game. Uh, yeah, I know it's a multi-role, but it's kind of a multi-role in name only. Same with the BVP. Um, it's not really a multi-role, but um, that's neither here nor there. They end on the 215, which, I mean, look at the difference in the size of this thing. It's huge. It's the same concept, but, you know, with... Uh, you know, like just a ridiculous amount of everything added to it. You're like, oh, I got air to air rockets. Let's give them more air to air rockets. So, um, oh, you've got those guns. Let's add an extra gun. So, this plane actually has 50% more um, gun power than the 210. 210's got two of them. You've got four of them on the 215. You've got three of them on the 212. You've got 50 freaking six rockets uh, in the nose cone here. Uh, which is really nice because it's centrally located. So if somebody's heading you on, you're not going to miss very often. And then you've got the two air-to-ground rockets, which I recommend keeping because I mean four. I'm sorry, because you know this plane is a true multi-role, where you lose the multi-role aspect uh, at tier nine and ten. I mean tier eight and nine. You know you were true multi-roles up until your two tier up until tier seven. You lose that with these two planes. But you gained it back at tier 10, and I'm really enjoying it. Let's hop into a battle, and then we'll do the post-battle results, and um, talk about the plane a little bit more. Alright, so we've got our tier 10 Batwing, the BBP215 here. Pretty uh, unique plane. You guys know me, I like to keep planes that are unique. And in my opinion, it can be fun. You just have to put it in the right position to be fun. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and let's get some get some getting on here. So you've got 20 seconds of boost, which is pretty significant. Ah, crap! I forgot to designate. I forgot to designate. And now it's all screwed me up. What's really cool about this plane is it's basically got twice the firepower. I mean, basically, it literally has twice the firepower of a normal Batwing, of the Tier 10, the original, the OG. Um, so yeah, of course it's going to be man less maneuverable. Could you imagine? I think I just fired some rockets, didn't I? Yep, excellent. Hit the R button. For my tail gunner. Don't actually use the rockets on this all that often, mainly because not a lot of people head on you very often. Let's go ahead and fire some of our air to ground rockets here. I should have the pneumatic control assist instead, but I don't. Knocked out his engines. I'll just stay on target here. You know, you, you find the planes that you can stick with is really what it comes down to. Um, I'm not going to go chasing after uh, the LA-160 that's on the enemy team. I'm going to go after, you know, 
things I know aren't going to be overly difficult to kill or you know that won't outmaneuver me very much defense aircraft in general don't outmaneuver anything well speaking of uh, head-ons <laughs> don't typically have to um, use the rockets very often and one of the reasons I it's, it's there's two reasons I don't have rocketeer on this plane one is because it's actually pretty infrequent that I have a head-on situation and two is because you've got 56 rockets right you're not gonna miss you don't need to worry about missing it's just not gonna happen alright so let's use some of that decent altitude performance that this plane has and get up uh, thank goodness for the Soviet bombers, but to be honest, I mean, look, I'm at 8,800 feet. This is not, like, out of the realm of possibility of some of the other bombers that are in the game. Or just higher altitude planes in general. Hey, you guys want to make a 252 look maneuverable? Yeah, man, if I had that new medic control assist right now, it'd be super sweet. But the plane does have really good roll response rate, just like all the bat wings do. Are you gonna die? Thank you. And because you've got that roll rate, make sure you know you try to. You can't out, um, you know, 360 turn a plane, but you can use your roll rate to get where, um, you know, get yourself on target relatively quickly. And so. For this plane, you know, if you're playing it like a, it's really, where the hell did that guy go? Well, that was weird. It's like a giant assault aircraft, right? Huzzah. Well, I was hoping to have my air-to-air -air rockets back soon, but it is what it is. Um, you know, it's like, you can, it's, it's really quite a jack-of-all-trades. Like, this is more of a multi-roll than any of the Batwings before it. Um, it's a much stronger platform in regards to actual firepower and armament than any of the bat wings. The, the tier 8 and tier 9 bat wings are in in reality they're light fighters. They are not multi-rolls. Um, Alright, let's see if this guy wants to... Nope. He learned his lesson. Even the bot learned his lesson. So that's good. There's a bomber coming in. He's got his engine knocked out, which is actually a good thing. Well, always a good thing if you're going against a 262. That's what they're built for, is speed. So if you can take away their speed, they become um, sitting ducks, right? Whoa, hello, sir. Let's head towards the center. Let's head back towards the center. Um, you know, and this is a pretty fast plane. I mean, it's not the world's fastest plane, but it's the fastest of, for the multi-rolls, and it's the fa it's the highest altitude for the multi-rolls. And it's got a ridiculous amount of guns, right? And, you know, just like self-defense armament that all the other multi-rolls don't have. I'm going to ignore him. I'm actually going to go for this J7W3, just because I kind of assumed he was going to turn. Yeah, this is one of those situations where I really wish I had the pneumatic control assist on this instead of nothing. Is that 160 that I really would want to avoid? What the? I keep hitting those freaking rockets. Some sort of more ran. just keep on keeping on. I don't want to go to the spawn, but I'm going to the spawn because that's, you know, where I'm going. Stop hitting the R button. Nope. Toast. Yeah, move too close to that spawn area, but, I mean, we've got a pretty firm grip on this game. Pretty close to actually having air supremacy, which is 
a shame. Uh, but you can see if I had um, pneumatic control assist on this, I would be in a much better place. Uh, the wings don't get knocked. Ah, dang it! The wings don't get knocked out very often, do they? So, um, what am I gonna do here? So I'm gonna go this way. Use my air-to-ground armament. Need to probably. I need to move my. I've never. You know, there's not a lot of um, planes that have a tail gunner and rockets, so I don't have this issue very often where I'm hitting the R instead of the T. Uh, what am I doing? That's right. I'm going down. I figure I'll get rid of that shenanigans. Oh, crud. Crud, 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 crud. Tail gunner engage. Thank you, tail gunner. I'll boost along like we're in a heavy, because it's basically what we are in this engagement. Defense aircraft, but let's get rid of this LA first. If I can, stay on target. Stay on target. There we go. LA 160 is a very, very fast plane. Um, underrated for speed, to be honest. Everybody thinks it's just like a turn and burn kind of thing, but it burns as much as it turns. Yowzers. Rear gunner, earn your paycheck, please, sir. Go. Yay! Cool, kept me alive just long enough to keep me alive. <laughs> Wisdom of Postal. And there we go. Yeehaw! So we did a little bit of everything there, and to be honest, I don't have this plane set up um, for the best. So let's head back to the hangar. Alright, so we've got 16 frags there. Um, 5% more to specialist, yay. Uh, did a little bit of everything, which is exactly what you want a multi-roll to be. And keep in mind, this was an all-bot match, because God forbid anybody be on at uh, 1 p.m. on a Sunday. Um, you know, so we didn't have to deal with a specialized XF-90. We didn't have to deal with um, some of those, you know, like an ME-1101, things of that nature. I'm, I'll post a video, you know, of me running into those situations, but in those kind of situations you want to um, you know be mindful of what's around you and use your strengths it's like so what it comes down to in this plane is you actually kind of revert back to a normal multi-role of sorts whereas the BVP 210 and 212 you're really basically a light fighter with some rockets on it um, this reverts back to a normal multi-role what does a normal multi-role do well it can attack the ground and flip you know, kill sectors, so that way you can flip a sector. Kill ground targets, so you can flip a sector. Um, it's very good at self-defense, and it can dogfight every once in a while when you need it to be. And you really can. It's pay attention to the planes that aren't paying attention to you. And you saw how many times I got behind planes that I really shouldn't have been able to take out. But you've got these 420s <laughs> um, that can really tear things up. You've got a lot of self-defense in forward self-defense with the rockets rear self-defense with the um, gunner here. So um, I have this plane set up incorrectly in my opinion. You should use the pneumatic control assist because it'll allow you to get on target um, a little bit better from time to time. Uh, what do I have this? Aircraft hit points. Uh, my roll resistance is still really good. Huh, I didn't realize I did this. Um, but this actually kind of makes sense. We've got the most hit points for uh, multi-roll at this tier. Now I've got 856. So, you know, if I can't outturn something, I want to have the hit points that'll allow me to live long enough to, you know, get out of trouble. I've also built up my speed on this particular plane. Um, for my gunner, 
again I'm built for self defense so I've got defensive fire so that way I'm taking less um, less damage from the planes that are attacking me right now I've got armor I'm not sure if that's the way to go or if quick reflexes is the way to go um, the reason I took armor is because I eventually want to get uh, ballistic expert I get that extra firing range um, we'll see it seems to be doing me fine I kinda think that I'd do even better with quick reflexes at this point but whatever for the pilot um, so the whole reason I'm actually making this video is somebody um, asked a community question on Facebook you know, how do they have their 215 set up for the pilot and I was like oh that's a good question I don't know how I've got it set up I know I like this plane I mean I like flying it enough to, to freaking fly it um, it's not going to be a gathering dust plane in my hangar I've got it set up as you know I want to make sure my guns are hitting but I don't think marksman 2 is a necessity again I'm looking for speed so I've got engine guru 1 as my second one and I'm gonna put aerodynamics expert as my um, as my third option uh, maybe not because I've got the the airframe as a hit points thing so now that I say that out loud I'll probably go with engine guru 2 and um, we'll see how it go that goes um, either that or I might switch out the reinforced airframe I've, I've got this just for the hit points I figure I can't outmaneuver even if I put a lightweight you know wing frame I'm not going to be able to um, outmaneuver much of anything anyway and that takes away from hit points so I kinda want the opposite direction the the roll rate is still really good even with the um, six percent decrease in it and so that's how I've got my 215 set up you've got the 420 mil cannons that are on the front here these you know these are really good guns they're t decent range I mean they're, they're they kinda remind me of the um, Hispanos that you have on the British line you know, 2600 feet as far as the um, range is concerned 200 damage per second so you're doing 800 damage a second with your uh, forward firing guns there, you know, you've got these two 13 mil cannons on the back. Not cannons, sorry, machine guns on the back. You know, just enough to really kind of be a, an annoyance. Um, and I typically don't hop on the tail gunner. You know, when I'm flying through a group of people, I just kind of let the tail gunner hit people as I'm going through there, and um, cause little bits of damage here and there, make it easier for my allies to kill them or for me to kill them on the way back. You've got 56 freaking R4M rockets on this thing. 50 freaking six. Um, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, and that's this. Actually, it's the the biggest reason why I don't have Rocketeer as a as a thing on my pilot right now. I'll add Rocketeer at a later time, but it's not a necessity. You've got fifty six rockets. Like, let that soak in, right? Um, they they launch in groups of eight. So even if you're only launching two salvos, 16 rockets, you're going to do a lot of damage. I, you know, I'm, how many times in a game do you head on somebody, um, in, you know, in like back-to-back -back situations? Super rare. And actually right now at tier 10, especially, it's super rare to just head on anybody in general. So I just toss all 56 out. You know, I'm going to kill whatever's coming at me at 56. Um, and so that's why I don't need Rocketeer. You've, I'm throwing enough crap at the wall, it's going to stick. Um, you do have the um, air-to-ground armament here. You're going to do 8,000 damage with this, so it's just enough to help flip the sector. It's not going to, you know, take down a mining facility or anything like that, but it's good supplemental, and, and that's why I like this plane. It's kind of like what everything... It's what the Tier 8 and 9 Batwing aren't, but in a good way, in my opinion. Uh, I know if I said it, I'm just going to say it a million times. The Tier 8 and 9 are really just fighters. Um, this really is a multi-role. This really can do a little bit of everything, um, and you need to think of it in that kind of term. I think we kind of get stuck with, well, it's, you know, it should be a better version of the Tier 9. No, the, the Tier 9 on this line is the best fighter in this line. Um, this plane right here is honestly an extension of the FW-190s, uh, kind of, um, where it can actually f um, help supplement flipping sectors, taking down heavy aircraft and um, ground attack planes, even some low altitude bombers. You know, it can do a little bit of everything. It's not the best at necessarily anything, but I think it really is a good jack of all trades plane that does that gets a bad rap. Plus it looks cool as frig. I mean look at this thing. Right? Like 
I get it. I get it. It's not a 210. It's not a 212. But that doesn't make it a bad plane. It just makes it a different plane. So, yeah. That's my opinion on it. Um, I still probably need to tweak it a little bit, but I'm having a lot of fun with this plane. And I think... I think if we change our mentality of what this plane should be, I think more people will have fun with this plane as well. I know if you again, if you run into XF90s and MEP1101s and any of the meta planes that are out there, um, you know it's not going to be a cakewalk like this particular battle was, um, but it can still be viable, right? If you see an XF90 coming in, you know do something about it. Don't just keep flying in a straight line. Um, you know, use your strengths. Flip around if you can, and um, you know, yeah, he's gonna—he's probably gonna zoom away, but you can do a lot while he's spending time zooming away. Um, you know, be like a multi roll. A multi roll is not supposed to be a dogfighter. A multi roll is not supposed to get stuck in. A multi roll is supposed to be on the periphery, um, using your strengths to flip sectors and defend sectors, and get out of the way of other people if you need to. Sometimes you need to. Sometimes you need to play second fiddle and uh, be a pretty damn good second fiddle. I think the 215 can do that. Anyway, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on this plane. I don't hear a lot of people talking um, about it in general, and when I do hear them talking about it, it tends to be more negative than positive. Um, I know it's not a meta plane, so yeah. Um, I'm not sure there is a multi-role, a tier 10 multi-role that's meta, now that I think about it. No, 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 no. No, I guess not. I mean, the Hunter might be the closest thing, um, but in my opinion, the F-84F is like right in line with that um, you know this one sacrifices the F-84F sacrifices maneuver I mean um, gun armament for more ground armament and you know has more maneuverability where the hunter has more speed but the altitude performance is this minimal difference so can't count that whereas this plane has you know good speed and has the best altitude performance and by a significant margin best altitude performance so you can actually do some things that you wouldn't be able to do in a lot of the other um, a lot of the other multi rolls and it's got that significant buff in, in survivability that you don't really realize until you realize well crap you know I've got I've got mine to 850 hit points that's pretty it's pretty significant right um, and yeah, the gun armament on the Hunter's stellar, but it's got 430s, so of course it's stellar. We've got 420s on the 215, um, and it got, you saw in this game, it can obviously do a heck of a lot of damage. Anybody that's used 20 mil cannons, which, you know, everybody's used 20 mil cannons in this game, you know how strong they can be. They're very strong on the 215, so. Yeah, yeah, give it a chance, honestly. Like, you know, the whole FW190 line is a really good uh, line. I was afraid, I don't want to say afraid is the right word, but I wasn't looking forward to the 215. But I quite enjoyed this entire line. It's it's staggered though. I mean, tier 5, 6, and 7 are completely different than tier 8 and 9. And then tier 10 is kind of like a smash up of, of, you know, the tier 8 and the tier 7. <laughs> um, and then, you know, thrown into tier 9. So, I mean, thrown into tier 10. So, um, did I not upgrade my. Oh, good, I did. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on this plane. Um, have you kept it? Um, did you get it and say, screw this plane, I'm going home and get rid of it? Um, and what do you think of my assessment? Does it is that how you're playing it, or are you trying to play it like a, a Tier 9 um, fighter, and that's why you're having issues? Anyway, I appreciate your guys' opinion. Thank you for hanging out with me today, and I will see you next time.